Hello and welcome to the National Oceanography Centre's Into the Blue podcast. I'm your host Will and today I'm joined by Lizzie James to talk about her love of paddleboarding and the importance of being an ocean advocate. Welcome Lizzie, thanks for joining me. Thank you very much for having so, me. So usually, I mean, listeners for who have listened to previous episodes will know that we usually ask the, ho- or ask the guest about basically their career history, how they got to knock, what their position is. But as you're one of our first guests who isn't a knock scientist and doesn't work for knock, um, I thought I'd ask a pretty random ocean question. So what is your favorite sea creature and why? Ooh, um, I would say it's a tough choice, but it's not. It would have to be sharks. Okay. I would say specifically probably blue sharks and right. then great whites just after. Obviously classic. Good shout. Yeah, I feel as though everybody yeah. <laughs> loves yeah. those. Um, reason why, you know, they're just cool. Yeah. Like there's always been that mystery around sharks i think growing up and watching obviously yeah. the scary Jaws movies yeah. Like, yeah um but they're just incredible creatures incredible yeah. animals when you get to look into them a little bit more and actually blue sharks if you look up a picture of a blue shark they're the cutest looking sharks <laughs> i have ever seen in my life they're just not incredible. quite like a great one yeah. <laughs> not quite no. no they've just got cute little faces and a, a really vibrant blue color as well so yeah hands down my favorite yeah, so have you seen one in the wild i have yeah last year was the first time first time for right. me but um i went swimming with them and it was just the best experience yeah. of my life that's amazing yeah yeah that's a great start so <laughs> obviously we know you love the ocean but your first love is paddle boarding um do you want to just let us know sort of how you got into paddle boarding and maybe some of your favorite places to paddle board and and why you love it so much yeah we could be here a while <laughs> this <laughs> could take a while time. um i i mean i've always been into water sports um but i suppose i i'd paddle boarded before um the last few years so before lockdown and things but when i just had a bit more time on my hands i spent a lot more time near the water a lot more time on it and um yeah i guess my love for paddle boarding just grew from there so it's been probably the last three years where I've been doing it pretty much daily. Yeah. Obviously fitting it in around work and things like that. But um, I just find it the most calming experience really for me. So I guess that's what I love most about paddleboarding is that it's so versatile in the sport that if you wanted to go off and break world records, you can do that. If you wanted to be a racer, you could do that. But if you just wanted to take time out for yourself, you know, refill your cup, have a good time, yeah. maybe socialize. You can do all of that as well. So it's just, it's lovely. And you see the best sunsets and the best sunrises when yeah. you're on the water. I guess for like mental well being as well, it must be so yeah. sort of tranquil and relaxing. 100%. Yeah. They always say, don't they, that um, humans are drawn to water and yeah. actually you need it to survive. And um, if you just go and spend five minutes near an open body of water, whether yeah. that's like a local lake or a river or the sea, it is it's just got this really calming and feel good effect it just releases loads of endorphins yeah, yeah. so you so you're based in the south coast like like us so what are your favorite areas in the south coast to go paddle boarding um favorite areas well i guess my most local areas would be um the itchin river so from woodmill that is pretty much in southampton so that's always quite a good spot um or coastal wise um along the fairham coast so stokes bay is incredible for a sunrise right and hillhead as well lovely and then if you want to find clearer water which i often do because yeah. i really enjoy snorkeling and looking at kind of the, the fish and the marine life and stuff then the dorset coast so lulworth cove is my all-time favorite place to paddleboard nice. and that little stretch of the jurassic coast yeah mm. so obviously the paddleboard is so intrinsically linked with the ocean so over the last few years obviously i think in so say in the first lockdown obviously the way was amazing and loads of people going out onto the water and yeah in terms of sort of what you see on the in the ocean on, on lakes and rivers and stuff obviously there's a lot made about microplastics and plastic pollution in the sea do you see a lot of that and has there been sort of increase over the last few years or have you what what do you sort of observe from that can you see some human impacts and, and sort of the the popularity with water sports and, and paddle boarding have you seen an effect that's having on the ocean at all yeah so um i know there's already been lots of research into yeah. things like um plastic pollution especially in our waterways and there are some great organizations that are doing great work for it but for me personally so a personal point of view um have i seen an increase in the pollution well 
spending more time on the water means that I have yeah. essentially. But um, you do sometimes you, you see an increase when there's been storms and it's just washed in on the tide. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I had a particular example not that long ago when I was at Durdle Door. Um, it's the first time that I've ever actually found a huge amount of plastic. It was predominantly plastic bottles, which right. had probably come from fishing ships or boats um, and flip flops as well, which is quite unusual for a UK <laughs> yeah. beach. Yeah. Um, that that had washed up in the storm and it was it was like apparently it come from the storm and not litter just off the beach right. but usually in summer you see an increase just from yeah. the amount of people that are, are using those yeah. waterways in terms of like it's obviously behavioral changes then so paddle boarders and people like yourself obviously you're helping is the behavior of, of of them trying to help towards basically reducing that and and yeah do people care more about the ocean now and they're more aware of what's happening and what they're seeing while they're paddle boarding or doing water sports do you see that behavioral change sort of having an effect and yeah i think so i think you i think when you immerse yourself in that type of environment when you're out on the water you're gonna form an attachment to it and you're gonna care a lot more or you're gonna want to know a lot more about it as well and from the people that i have spoken to who maybe took up paddle boarding in the last couple of years or sea dipping they've grown to have a much greater love of nature and they look after it or want to look after it a lot more than they ever did whether that's making small changes around the home in their everyday life yeah. or if it's doing litter picks so um there's a group actually who do kind of paddle boarding litter picks where you just all get right. together that's and you go cool. down the river yeah. or you go on a lake and you collect yeah. all the rubbish and things like that are just amazing that there are so many people now that want to do their bit and want to help clean up the ocean yeah so obviously that cut the the awareness of the ocean then obviously comes that comes hand in hand with sort of a knowledge of the ocean and knowing that you know there's dangers to the ocean and stuff. So if there's anyone who's watching or listening that would want to take up paddle boarding, so are there any tips that you have in terms of interacting with the ocean and, and rivers and stuff that you think people should be doing or keeping themselves safe while doing it or or just not sort of being aware of the, the, the maybe some hidden dangers of seas and rivers and, and oceans yeah so i know i said that i love the versatility yeah. of paddleboarding which i absolutely do and i love the fact that it is um like pretty much anyone and everyone can do it it's so inclusive but there are there are dangers as with anything i think when you're putting yourself out there especially if you're paddling on the sea um, you can't really ever know what the sea is going to do, especially with the weather as well. That could change and all of that impacts your experience. Um, but I would say top tip, if you're looking to get into paddle boarding, one, have a lesson first so you can go out and try, try the board before you buy it, essentially. Um, and they normally during that lesson will give you some basics. So they will let you know about the wind and right. what to avoid. So onshore wind is great. Offshore wind, not so great if you're paddling on the coast because yeah. it will obviously blow you out to sea which isn't necessarily what you want um and then they'll talk to you about particular bits of equipment as well so if you do have a paddleboard and you are going to go out paddleboarding on the coast then a buoyancy aid or a personal flotation device a right. waterproof phone pouch for your phone so you can take it with you as a way of communicating yeah. if you do get into trouble and just having a basic kind of understanding of the tides right. so um just knowing how it affects your local area too so it will be very location dependent yeah um that yeah, just having those fundamentals, which if you if you haven't grown up along the coast, then it can take a bit of time to get your head around it. But yeah. just knowing the difference between high and low water, what it might look like. Yeah. And all of that is information you can find from locals. So if you're out and you see someone else paddle boarding, you can always ask them yeah. or the fishermen or the lifeguards on the beach if you're on the beach and it's a lifeguarded beach yeah. um anything like that really. Yeah, I've, I've never think about taking the, the pouch <laughs> for the phone and stuff like that. Yeah. You think you just are oh, just I don't want to drop my phone in the sea, so I'll just leave my phone. Yeah, but then obviously you need it for if you get in trouble or anything, I suppose. Yeah, that's really interesting. So we'll go, we'll go on a bit more to about the ocean. But first, start us up. What if what is your ideal paddleboarding sort of location, or where what's your dream sort of paddleboarding trip that you do? Oh, um, ideal location is the sea. Yeah. But even more in detail to that would be like the sea at sunrise or sunset and it yeah. would be calm so flat no wind um and it would it would be warm it'd be summertime let's yeah. be honest just when it's a bit warmer yeah. a bit more pleasant to be out um but a dream trip you know i've got two one of them would be paddle boarding in the fjords okay. just so that there's the opportunity yeah. to potentially see killer whales yeah. um because that would just be incredible um and then the other one which i think is quite niche it's a bit weird but 
I wouldn't mind being dropped off, you know, in the middle of the okay. ocean. Yeah. On a boat, just go out Find on a boat. Just yeah. well, maybe not leave me there. <laughs> but to paddleboard in the middle of an ocean yeah. would just be I think like that's one that's a pipe dream yeah, for me, I think. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So we talk a bit more about the sort of what the ocean means to you. So I know it's that's quite a big question, but what does the ocean mean to you, sort of on a personal level? Obviously, is it been a case of you've grown up with the ocean and you've always it's always been a part of your life, or is it something you've sort of the love you develop later on, or or anything like that? Oh, that's a big question. Deep <laughs> answer. You know, the ocean is just it means it means a lot to me. Um, as people maybe do know or don't know i mean it is obviously intrinsic to our yeah. life anyway so it, it has an importance to everybody but yeah for me personally i've grown up by the coast pretty much my entire life i've pretty much lived by water my entire life um so it has played a huge part and it goes back to that mental health side of things as well it's yeah. it's, it's where i find my calm and my peace where i can think about things and i don't know you know i i feel as though more people need to experience yeah. that i need to just to get out there, get new yeah. water, yeah, and give it a go. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, in terms of so obviously being an ocean advocate, which is important for all of us. What yeah. maybe including during your paddleboarding, what what do you do to to sort of show that how much you care about the ocean, how much of an advocate you are? And what what maybe more what can people do themselves to to show that the fact they're ocean advocate and they care about the ocean and you know to make sure we're all pulling in the same direction in terms of protecting the ocean and looking after it. Yeah, so I, for me, being an advocate is someone who who champions something yeah. and you want to make a change or you want to educate people on it. And that is, that's what I try and, and do. <laughs> Hopefully it comes across <laughs> in the content that I share. But um, yeah, it's it's giving a voice to potentially maybe the the sea itself but then also everything that lives in that marine environment too right. so for me um if you don't live near the sea and you can't get out and do litter picks so one of the things that i often do when i'm out on my board is i will collect any of the trash that i find just yeah. so that i'm removing it from the environment and helping obviously in turn to help save turtles yeah. and seals <laughs> and everything else but um yeah i guess if you don't live near the ocean and you want to play your part and you want to help then Petitions. I know it's really boring, but signing petitions, campaigning for healthier seas, cleaner water, yeah. maybe for animals, and I will go back to sharks because <laughs> they are super important, mm. um, but campaigning for there to be like fishing bans and things like that. Yeah. Any petition you can find that's going to help protect the ocean and the ecosystems is something that you can do easily if you live in a city, you can't get out to the sea to do a litter pick. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's where I would start really. You can obviously make small changes in your everyday yeah. life as well, less plastic, so it's less that will end up in the sea. But um yeah, just get out there and campaign and sign for like sign things. Cool. That's good. Good plan. <laughs> um so should we end should we end on basically anything anything coming up? I understand you're taking on the Great Glen in Scotland. Is that right? Yes, yeah, I am. I don't know whether this is a stupid idea or not, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Um Last year, I did a charity paddle to raise money for the Alzheimer's Society, yeah. um, and I wanted it to become an annual thing. So, yeah, this year's challenge is to paddle the Great Glen, which is 96 kilometers um, across the width of Scotland. So I'll be going from Fort William um, on the west coast all the way to Inverness wow. um, on the east coast. Yeah, I am. Um, doing it all solo so i'm planning on taking everything that i need yeah. with me on my board um but i also want to help clean up the waterway too and i've heard kind of mixed stories about the fact that it is a i don't want to say a tourist attraction but it is a very popular walking route paddling yeah. route cycling route that people do and that litter is a problem so i really want to showcase the journey that trash can take from inland waterways out to the sea because i'll be going coast to coast um but also yeah to raise some money so Fingers crossed. Do you think you see the Loch Ness Monster? You know, I really hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. I don't know if it's going to be like a dinosaur, which I really hope. <laughs> uh, there might be some big fish, which yeah. probably will scare me. Cool. Mm. <laughs> that sounds amazing. It's for a great course. So really yeah, good. I hope so. Yeah. So you you spent the day at Knock. Um, what do you think? It's what amazing. You, yeah. yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. You know, there is so much that you don't 
sea that obviously goes behind the the expeditions or the research kind of surveys that you maybe hear about on the yeah. news but yeah seeing some of the samples um and also the like the sediment and stuff and yeah. just seeing what research they can do from it is just yeah it's eye-opening it's really incredible <laughs> i'm glad you enjoyed it so <laughs> do you want to give a shout out to some of the, the places people can find out more about you whether social media handles instagram things like that yeah so predominantly i'm on instagram which is magic underscore beans or you can just type in paddleboarding lizzie double z i e not a y um and i should pop up um you can find me on youtube as well um which is just lizzie silver james and um also on tiktok of the same handle lizzie silver james right. right so make, make sure to, to give lizzie a follow um <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll have we'll have the links in the description as well for, for people to, to action if they see that. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me today, Lizzie. Thank you for having me. To find out more about Lizzie, um, click the description, click the links in the description below. Uh, and to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes of Into the Blue, make sure to follow us on your favorite podcast app. See you in the next episode.